Hey folks. So recently I've gotten back into drawing with the CNC. Some of you might remember my video on drawing on t-shirts or more recently the drawings I used to talk about the different kinds of CNC cuts. <laughs> Most of us likely started out with the Hello World project where you attach a sharpie to the spindle and make the Shape Oko logo. When I got my Shape Oko 4, I had so much more room to play with, and one of the things I wanted to try was large format drawing. So back when I originally started working with a pen, I used this. It would clip onto the front of my um, CNC machine, and I would put a pen down into this and tighten these up. Um, it was great for working on shirts because I was relying on the springiness of the fabric to keep the pen from getting crushed, but there was really no give in this, and if the pen went down into the board, it was toast. So eventually I switched over to this, which I found from the CNC Nuts channel, which I really like. It's got a very steampunk aesthetic to it, which appeals to me, and you had, in my case, a spring, and some spacers in there and that held the pin in place and you use these little tiny pins right and things went together like this the spring gave you some play in here um, there were a couple of things though that I wasn't real thrilled about with it and the main one is that I had to use these really tiny sharpies and they're just not available in as many colors as the big ones are. So I really kind of wanted something that would use the big ones. And I also didn't like the fact that even with the spring in there, this seemed to just place a lot of pressure on the tip of the pen. And you'll notice the tip gets blunted really quickly. The advantage of this is that it actually mounted inside the spindle. Um, so that way I knew that whatever pattern I was tracing, if I followed up and reset X and Y, kept X and Y the same, when I followed up with my bit, I should get the exact same trace. So that was definitely an advantage for this. But like I said, the, um, the small pins and the inability to have, you know, different colored ink was kind of a big one for me. Plus, you know, the, the spring inside this was still a little bit too strong for what I was looking for. So I thought about the design a lot, and I really wanted to use off-the-shelf parts that anyone could get a hold of easily. So I decided to go with clear plastic tubing. This gave me both a body that would closely fit the pin and an insert piece in the back with a weight on it to apply a constant downward pressure on the pin. So there's a couple of pieces to this. There is the holder itself, which is this frame that goes around your router and this just slides off right so it's just a pull off piece like this and that slides back on all the way back and then we have a spot where we put our pin holder now the pin holder itself has a weighted piece here with a bolt and a half inch outside diameter piece of clear plexi then there is the ring here which basically just keeps me from pushing this all the way down through there. It gives me a consistent distance each time I put this in. So I include that ring on there and that just gets kind of glued into place. Um, there is this clear holder and if you'll notice in here there is a slightly smaller plastic ring that I pushed into there. Um, I cut this with a laser and put it in there. You can also use the, um, the half inch outside diameter and accomplish the same thing. But what it does is it catches that ridge on the pin and makes sure that the pin stays in there. And the weight up top has two purposes. If you'll notice, when the pin is in here, it wants to wiggle quite a bit, and that's because it tapers on the way back. But when I put this in, it catches the back end of the pen and stops that wiggle. So that way I get a nice clean line when I draw. This also provides me with a consistent weight on the pen each time 
so that I get a very nice line. Um, I can decrease this weight, weight and I'll get probably a finer line if I want, but I found that uh, the short 3 8 bolt seems to work pretty well. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the frame. If you're going to do any kind of tab and slot connections like this, it's always a good idea to make some test pieces just to make sure you're getting the fit you want. These are a pair of my test pieces and basically what they are is they're just a, a set of squares. They're exactly the same, right? So I can test fitting these different slots together. Each one of these slots as we go clockwise gets a little narrower, right? And these are fairly easy to create. I mean, you just start with a square, right? And then you start with whatever size you want your slot to be. In my case, I'm gonna say I want, you know, to start with 0.23 and a height of 0.5 inches. Okay, so now I can take this and drag it into there and I'll align them like that. And then I can use subtraction. All right, get that little guy out of the way. All right, so now I've got my slot. And then I can take him and just make him smaller to make my next slot turn it around, put it over here, and so on and so forth. Okay, so the main thing you want to remember with this is when you're going to cut out your test pieces on this, make sure that you're using the exact same piece of plywood that you're going to be cutting your real piece out of. Because as we all remember, plywood is made out of lies. The thickness is going to fool you every time. So we want our tests to be exactly the same as our initial pieces. Okay, let's take a look at what we have here um, before I pull them out. I use these little marks here. They're only about halfway through. They're in case one of these comes loose. That way at least I have some idea of where that should be. Um, then I go through before I even pull these loose from the board and just for my own sanity's sake, one, two, three, four, and again through four, so that I know each one of these gets progressively smaller, narrower, so I want to make sure I'm lining up same to same and I'm not putting the two with the three or something like that. So that's always a good idea when you do something like these. Um, you don't even necessarily have to do them anywhere near this big. I just did them this big because I thought it would be easier for you guys to see what's going on. Okay, so we have our two pieces now and I'm going to try the ones together first. Let's see how, oh yeah. So those slide together pretty good and they're still fairly easy to pull apart. So that's not bad. That's a good thing to know because there are going to be some situations where you don't want to use glue and you want to be able to take things apart and not shoot them across the garage. But for something like this, I'm going to want a little bit tighter fit. So I'm going to try this two here and see what that's like. And I can take that and do a little bit of convincing. That's what I'm looking for. So that right there is a nice tight fit. It is not going anywhere. Once that's together, it's together. I'm gonna to have to beat it apart with a hammer. So that's the fit I'm really looking for. So I'll go ahead and make all of my slots that size. A couple other things to note since we've got our tests here. I wanted to go ahead and show you this. Um, when you've got this kind of a, a connection between the two pieces, where you have a flat edge piece going back into this, you'll notice all these have a slight curve from our, from our bit, and you'll get these kind of gaps. So it's not really a good joint for this kind of work, but when you put the two of them together like this, you get a much better joint and a much better fitting together. So the other thing you're gonna notice is that all of my notches are about a half inch, right? So they're about a half inch deep. But because I've got two of them together, you need to make sure that you allow for a full one inch for all of your pieces to sit. Otherwise, this is gonna come in and it's gonna hit something. So that's how deep we need to allow for everything to be for our frame to fit around the spindle. 
So when I'm working on something like this that needs to be fitted to a particular piece, I find that it's helpful to create kind of a physical representation of that piece here in my design so that I have something I can reference. So that being, I took a couple of um, measurements of the router spindle holder and it is 3.95 by 3.7 okay and let's see the router is the router is about three inches 3.1 so let's do 1.55 all right, and it sits back about 0.43 from the front. So I'm going to make myself a little spacer here. Height of 0.43, right? And then I'm going to align him and him. Okay, and now I'm going to align him to him. And he needs to sit like that. And make sure that he sits in the center. Cool. All right, so that gives me an idea of what that block looks like that holds the spindle. I also know that it's about 1.1 thick, so I'm going to draw myself another little box here. And do 1.1 by 3.95. Okay, cool. So that should give me essentially what the front of this looks like. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this little guy out of the way for right now. We'll come back to him in a minute. I want to get the overall size and shape of the piece that's going to fit on the top and bottom of this shoe. And basically what I want is kind of a U-shaped piece. I think that's, you know, a nice, a nice form factor. And it needs to come out an inch on this side and an inch on this side to allow for the uh, slots to fit correctly. So I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to duplicate him. Copy. And he's right now 3.95 wide. I'm going to go ahead and add another inch to either side so that would be 5 and I'm going to give myself a little wiggle room here so instead of 5.95 I'm going to go 6. Right? So now that gives me kind of the overall width of the piece, and I can align that to the midpoints there. Um, I also want like a rounded front to it, so I'm going to make myself a circle, and I'm going to set my circle size to a radius of 3. So that will give me a 6 inch circle. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this guy over here and snap him to, let's find the midpoint on this guy. Okay, so that node right there, I can grab that and snap him right there. Okay, cool, so now I've got those two pieces. I'm gonna select both of them and I'm gonna union them. This one, Boolean union. Okay, now I've got my basic piece. Grab my midpoint here and put it back on the midpoint there. Cool. So now I've got a basic idea of my shape. This is a little bit far in front for what I want, so I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna use my arrow keys to jog this back a little bit. And I think that'll give me closer to what I want. So our overall piece size looks good, but we need to trim it back so that it sits flush with this top here because otherwise it's going to try and sit too far back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new rectangle. 
right? And you'll notice that I set the line so that it comes down right here. I'm going to take this piece, select it first. I'm going to select this guy second so he's got the dotted line around him. And then I'm going to subtract. Whap. So now, move him out of the way. And you see I've got everything aligned with the back end. Message oh, for you, sir. Okay. New email from future me. This could be important. One second. Okay, pick up some more wine. Don't read the news. Man, that makes sense, makes sense. Oh, okay. Um, so Future Me has reminded me that the first time I do this, I screw it up horribly because I forgot that my dust shoe actually sits a little bit in front of this space right here. And I need to take an additional three quarters of an inch off of this. So I'm going to grab my rectangle again from up here and I'm going to make him exactly three quarters tall. Seven, five, wham. So now he's three quarters tall. So now I can grab this node, come here, lock him to that node there. Move my line over a bit. Okay, now I should be able to grab him. Grab him second. I keep gendering my pieces. Why am I doing that? Okay, so again, he's got the subtraction pieces around here. I hit subtract. Okay, and now I've got a better idea of what my piece should look like, right? So this is going to be my basic piece. The next thing I need to do is get this hole for the router in there. I'm going to copy this and move him out of the way for just a second. So he is 1.55 radius, which means he's 3.1. So I need to do a rectangle that is 3.1 wide. I don't really care how long it is. So I'm going to grab my node, come up here, lock it to that node. I'm going to grab these two pieces, union them. Okay, so now I can grab my midpoint here, lock him to a midpoint on that. It doesn't want to lock. All right, I will just do an align then. Let's grab this guy second. So we're going to align him center-wise, and then we're going to align him to the bottom of this guy. Okay, so now these two pieces are aligned, and I can come back here, and I can select this, and I can select him, so he's got the minuses, and I can subtract. All right, so now I have my overall shape. This is going to be the shape that I cut out, right? And I need to put my notches in this shape. So if we go back down here, we remember that we chose number two for our notches. And this particular notch right here is 0.21 wide. So I'm going to go ahead and create myself a couple of rectangles that are 21 wide by a half inch long. So height to one with 0.5. All right, so these represent my notches and I'm gonna take my midpoint here and I'm gonna drag it onto that and then I'll probably need to align it a little better. But I want one there, copy. And one about right there and then I want them on the same way on the other side so let's grab those copy grab the midpoint drag them over here seems to be about right okay so I'm going to take those and I'm going to align them to the outside of this like that I'm going to take these two guys, doing it again, 
and align them to this. All right, excellent. Okay, so now I want to subtract these out. Before I do that, I'm going to probably add some more slots here. So let me duplicate these just to make sure I've got one. That's just kind of out of the way. All right, so let's do this one at a time. Grab that. Subtract. Boom. Cool, so now I've got my notches there. I'm going to add two more on either side here just to kind of give myself a little bit more support. So let's take this guy and I'm going to rotate him. Let's see. And this I'm just kind of getting close enough. I'm not all that. snickety about where he sits. Cool. So that one goes right there. I'm going to copy. I'm going to flip him. Grab his midpoint. Drag that one over there. Okay. So let's do this. Grab and subtract. Okay, so now let's zoom in and delete those guys and see if I've got what I think I've got. I'm going to have to do a little bit of cleanup, I can tell. Yeah. Okay, so you notice I've got a little bit of leftover junk here. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom way in, select that, and edit my nodes. Let's just get rid of all those. Delete. Uh, D. Cool. So that's got that one. Zoom back out. Control to drag. And zoom back in again. And same thing here. Select him. Get my node editor. Select all the nodes I don't need and hit the D key to delete those. Okay. That should work good enough. All right, let's reset my view. Okay, so this is what my top and bottom piece are gonna look like. So now that I've created those, I need the little side pieces that are gonna fit in here. So each one of those is gonna be about an inch wide and we'll fit down into one of these slots and I need six of them. That's where this piece is going to come in handy. So this is my width, right? I'm going to create a new rectangle. This is going to be our slot piece. So it is going to be one inch wide and this is 1.1 so let's make this about 2 so it'll sit a little bit proud on either side so midpoint to midpoint probably gonna need to make that a little bit more so let's do let's do 2.5 Okay, that looks good. So now I'm going to need to make some more of my little notches here. Those were 2.3. Sorry, 2.1. Point 0.21. 0.21. 5.5. Okay. So now, remember, this is the thickness of my piece, right? And that's where 
we need to use this to align these little guys. So that right here needs to align to this. So he needs to sit just on the top of him. All right. Man, I keep doing that. And then it needs to sit on the other side and align to that. Okay, cool. So that's my first notch, right? And that'll assume that that sits correctly on the thickness of this piece. So now I need to create a second one down here. Copy. And we're going to align that to the inside of this guy. the outside of this one. Right, so now we've got our two notches there. I can get rid of this piece right now, move him up and out of the way, and I want to subtract again. Boom. Subtract again. And now I've got my pieces that are going to fit into these sides, and I'm going to need six of those. Alright, so these are all of my tab pieces here, and I need a second one of these for the bottom. First I'm going to select this and this and get that out of the way this way okay so I need this duplicated move him over copy and we should be ready to go. So we're going to go over to tool paths. I'm going to do a new tool group. Name that Okay. And I'm going to select all of these guys. Contour outside, using the stock bottom, which is 0.23. In my eighth inch bit, we're going to go to the outside. And since I'm going to use uh, the tape to hold things down, I don't need tabs. And I'm just going to call this eighth cutout. export my g-code and we should be good to go message for you sir what is it now yes I'll remember the wine oh oh my bad I forgot to put the hole for where the pin is let's bring this back over to the design ah, okay the hole for the pin is 0.63 diameter, which is not radius. Radius is different. So, 0.315. All right, so that is the hole for our pen, and it needs to be on both of these. So, I'm going to grab this and select this guy, and we're going to align him to the center and then align him to the very front. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Copy. Align 
to the center of him and then align to the front okay so now I've got these in the exact same place I'm going to select both of them and then I'm going to use my arrow keys to nudge them up until I've got it in a spot that I like that should keep it off the router and the other piece let's nudge it just a hair down use the shift key and I can do smaller increments that's about where I want so now that should still be the same measurement on both of those now all I need to do is the tool path to cut out to the inside of this switch over to our tool paths and I'm going to add a new contour still the eighth inch bit inside left and we're going to go down two three to the stock bottom okay that should have us with what we need so hopefully that's everything and we won't be hearing again from future self here's hoping fingers crossed okay so we've got all our pieces cut out and now it's a matter of just popping everything apart and seeing how well it all fits together Okay, so I've popped a couple of these loose, and now it's time to see whether or not these fit. And I think they're going to be just right. Let's... Oh, yeah. That's going to be perfect. That's going to fit just great. So those will all tab around the side, and then we'll put the other piece on as well, and we should be ready to go. Let's get this assembled. Okay, and as you can see, that creates an incredibly strong and solid piece. That sucker is not going anywhere. And now we got to do is see if it fits and make sure that our pen fits where we want it to. Okay, so now we need to see if our frame fits. I did a little bit of fiddling with a wood rasp just to go ahead and make things a little bit easier to slide on and off. You may have to do some adjusting with it. But right now, after I made my adjustments, this slides on like that and it's it's nice and firm in that I can take it back off again but it's not going to slide around on me once the machine starts going so now what we need to do is fit our pin and make sure that the tube for the pin fits where we need it to so basically this is what we want we want that plastic piece to sit down about an inch or a half inch below where that coupling is and then all i'm going to do is come up here and i'm going to mark it with a sharpie try and show you what i'm doing give myself a little bit of room and that way i can put my spacer in here and that should give me everything i need okay so now that we've got our half inch inside diameter tube this is what's going to fit our pin we need something that'll stop it from sliding all the way through so now as you can see the um the half inch inside diameter and half inch outside diameter are pretty tight fit so what i like to do with that small piece is i'll get it started right here like this so that it's part of the way in and then i'll go ahead and put some super glue on it to go ahead and push it back all the way and that'll be our pin stop now since the super glue sets fairly fast you want to do this fairly quickly which is one of the reasons why i've sort of preset this right so i'll put that in so it's straight down and now i've got that one piece inside the other all right and that's going to form the lip that'll stop our pin 
So let's go ahead and let that dry and then we'll come back and finish the rest of it. Okay, so now we want to test with our Sharpie and this is just an old one that I've got. We'll slide that in there. And you notice that ring catches it and I've still got a nice quarter of an inch of play there. That'll give me plenty to go ahead and mark. So that shouldn't be any problem at all. And that should be able to move up and down freely. And that's good. Now, what we need next is we need another piece of this half inch outside diameter. And you wanna make sure that these ends are really clean because you want, you want this to be able to move freely, right? And we're gonna cut the next piece and come down, capture the end of that pen, and I'm gonna give myself about a half inch of space up here, and then we'll put our bolt down inside. So I wanna go ahead and cut right here. Um, unfortunately, the pen that I mark with is also the one that's in the holder, so I'll figure it out. <laughs> um, so we'll go ahead and make our cut right there, and then we'll put our bolt in. Okay, now that we've got our short piece cut, we're just gonna take a three quarter bolt and we're gonna glue it in here. Um, all this is is a weight that'll keep a constant downward pressure on the pen. And you can use whatever you want, fishing weights if you got them. I'm gonna go ahead and slather a little bit of glue on that. And then we'll go ahead and put that in there. Give it a couple of spins and let it dry. And let it dry, sitting like that. Okay, now we want to fit our pin holder in here, and you can probably sand these a little bit just to make sure that this isn't, you know, too terribly tight. Um, you want some play in it. Just, you don't want it to just drop through, but you want a little bit of play in it. So set this to where it's still below your chuck collet, and then I make like a little donut here that fits on this and it goes down and sits like that. And I will then glue that into place so that I come a consistent depth each time. Let me push that down just a hair. All right. And then when I'm ready to do things, I can just put my pin in, put my weight in, and I'm ready to go. Now you can see that this pin has about a quarter of an inch of play, which is fine. That's really all you need for drawing like this. Um, but just don't get so caught up that you smash this into the surface because that's, that's gonna break and that's not cool. Uh, but that should give you everything you need. Glue this into place when you're ready so that that way you can just pull the whole assembly up by that little circle. Once you have the pen holder set up, there are a few things you need to do before you can start drawing. First, when you're selecting tool paths, you'll need to use either a contour or a pocket path to draw. A contour will draw and follow your line. The pocket path will fill in the entire shape. You'll also want to select no offset when you're doing a contour path. That will cause you to follow the line exactly and not go to the inside or outside. However, before you can do anything, you'll need to add the Sharpie in as one of your bits. Select the Edit button and select Tool. Then you'll want to add a new library from the list of libraries here, if you don't already have one. In this case, I'm going to add a new library the material is kind of irrelevant, but I'm going to choose MDF anyway, and I'm going to set the machine to my shape OCO. I'm going to choose Drawing as the name of the library and click OK. So now I've got a set of end mills, ball mills, V mills for my drawing library. I'm going to choose Engravers for this, and I'm going to right click and choose New Tool, Engraver Mill and whichever the measuring systems you're more comfortable with, I'm going to go with inches. So now I have an edit tool window. I'm going to name this one Sharpie. Um, the rest of this I can leave blank. The diameter, I'm going to use a sixteenth of an inch or 0625 um, and I'm going to leave the angle at 90 degrees. 
So I'm going to set my plunge rate to 20 inches per minute and my feed rate to 80. This may seem slightly aggressive, but we're not actually cutting anything. So I don't really have to worry about stressing the machine out with either of these measurements. The RPMs I'm going to leave at the default. And for the depth, I'm going to leave it at the default, 0.05. You'll want to remember this number and set the max depth of your contour or pocket cuts to match this. Otherwise, the pen will do multiple traces of the same line or fill. The last thing we're concerned with is the step over. This is how far over the bit will move each time it draws a line in our pocket pass where we're filling in the shape. I'm going to set mine to 20%. Your mileage may vary. Um, but you can go ahead and leave this right now at the 20% and that's going to be your default. We also want to set the 3D speed rate to 80 as well. I'm not sure if that's what comes in on the pocket pass, but I believe it is. So go ahead and set that to 80 and leave the rest of the settings as they are. Click OK and you've now added a Sharpie to your list of engravers. Select that, click OK, and you've now selected the Sharpie as your tool. I actually have two Sharpies set up. One is set up at the 16th of an inch. The other is set up to a half of that, or a 32nd of an inch, and that's for the thin Sharpies, for the fine point Sharpies. Once you have those set up, you're ready to begin drawing. A few final thoughts on using the pen on CNC. If you have the bit setter on your machine, you'll want to disable it for pen drawing. Even if the marker was aligned with the spindle, it doesn't conduct so the bit setter wouldn't work, and you'll just end up with a bunch of sharpie marks on your bit setter. Things like canvas and foam core board are not always 100% flat, so it's okay to make the pen ride a bit below the surface since it doesn't actually cut into the material. The weight up top will give you a consistent line if the pin is set to drop an eighth of an inch or a quarter. Just make sure you don't drag the plastic holder across the surface and you should be fine. For large, more complex drawings, you may have to split things up and swap the pins out as Sharpies can tend to dry out on larger runs. All in all, this kind of work has actually become one of my favorite things to do on CNC right now. It's quiet, it's fast, and it's rather hypnotic at times. I hope you'll enjoy playing with it as much as I do. And I hope you'll join me again next time. See ya.